employers and managers who had to fire their best employee. What happened? We hire a lot of people in recovery who are a part of the drug court program under the condition that they will be terminated if they go back to jail for drug alcohol charges. This co-worker was our hardest worker and always picked up shifts and got tons of compliments. So it really sucked when she relapsed and failed her p-test with drug court. She got sent to jail for a week and we had to fire her. I still kept in touch with her. And when I found out she was pregnant, I convinced my boss to hire her back. One last chance. I'm so happy I wasn't wrong because she is about to celebrate her fourth year of sobriety and she's now management. That is awesome. Had a great waiter, Robert. Sucker could run circles around the entire staff. He knew the kitchen as well. Could jump in at prep and assist if we got backed up and still tend to his tables. Dumbass put a $3 bottle of white Zinfandel in his backpack. Right in front of a security camera and while the owner was sitting at the bar eating. He was a student and working part time he had to be bringing in $300 $500 in cash a week. Worked in a restaurant at hotel chain. Management regularly found meaningless reasons to suspend various employees or cut hours. This one guy had been there almost 13 years. Clients loved him. Staff appreciated his presence and he often came to the rescue of anyone requiring help. Everyone could depend on him and he supported everyone. He had, like everyone in a restaurant, bumped heads with management now and again, like everyone. On one particular season they decided they were going to groom him in the eventuality to take on more responsibility. His position would eliminate his right to tips but it came with insurance, a retirement plan and steady pay. He had kids, was in his mid 40s. It all made sense why someone would take that job. He would however no longer be in the union. Fast forward to the day after his training is complete. The guy comes in with his management uniform and all. Some waiter calls in sick. And instead of him calling in another employee he decides he was going to handle a few tables and the management responsibilities. At the end of the shift the hotel manager summons the guy into his office. Like the boss of his boss. They fired him straight away. He was escorted out of the building and our boss said there were strict rules and management working tables harmed the hotel's image. It was complete BS. He had maybe taken two tables and split the rest amongst the rest of the staff. Everyone basically agreed they promoted him just to get him out of the union to be able to fire him. A number of employees left shortly after for other various reasons. It was a sort of shaking up the coup and anyone who wouldn't fall in line would be shown the door. Today, that restaurant no longer exists. They closed down maybe two years later. Rebranded the restaurant from American Steakhouse to Italian French Dining. New cooks, new waiters, new management. It was just sort of the catalyst of the first domino. And that's how Olive Garden was born. Had a guy who would work his butt off daily in putting data into spreadsheets. Would come in, put in solid hours of actual work, not goofing off. He would literally get four times as much stuff done a week as anyone else in the office. After three weeks straight of this, other people start to take notice and occasionally ask him to help them out when they are behind. And he obliges. This gets worse and worse. And eventually people are basically just walking all over him while they spend all day facebooking and whatnot. Because he won't say no if they ask him to help with their work. The dude just keeps trucking through though. About 4 months into working there, it's gotten to the point where you can hear the extra cunty girls talking about leaving early and not getting in trouble because he will just do all the work for us if we ask anyway. Well the guy goes into the boss's office, and I work right next to it so I can hear more or less the entire conversation. I am paraphrasing but it went something like this. I would like a raise. I am doing way too much work for how much I am getting paid. Everyone else who works here is so dang lazy. I even have people making jokes about how I will do their work for them and they will get paid for it. Well, name. I can sympathize with you. But you have to understand. I can't just give you a raise. If I give you a raise I would have to explain to everyone why you got a raise and they didn't. You could tell them it's because I am doing half of their work for them while they look at stupid memes. I'm sorry, name. It just wouldn't work out well. Well then is there any positions available above mine that I could apply for a promotion to? I don't think we can really look into a promotion this early into you working here. We would need time to properly evaluate your work ethic. 
Seriously, you seriously just said that to me. I'm not going to break my back doing an entire office's work for a company that doesn't give two shoots about me. You and this entire office can go frick themselves. He walks out of the office fuming mad and yells hey everyone. Boss, just denied my raise, so no more leaving work early for any of you lazy frick heads. Cause I freaking quit. It was like a scene from office space only in real life. He was one of my best weekend workers. Dependable. Always on time. Really good at his job. I got a call from my management on the 4th of July saying we are going to need to find a replacement for name. I say why. Did he find a better job? My management no. He was arrested for murder last night. So let's just say I didn't have the chance to fire him. I was dumbfounded when I got that call. My dad had a guy working for him who was great. Could work long hours. Not complaining about being on call. Etc. Well he got caught freaking a nurse in his office. He got divorced and had a nervous breakdown and started threatening to kill everyone. So they had to fire him and have him banned from the premises. Oh and after that we caught him hiding in the woods behind our house. Crazy guy. Oh and he sued us for wrongful termination. Really dedicated guy. Top manager for retail job I worked at lost her keys to the store that also had the keys to all the registers on the key ring. The registers started going short or would be empty aside from the change and dollar bills in the drawer. This went on for months. Corporate found out after installing a new set of security cameras overnight without her knowledge. She enlisted a group of sales associates to do most of the dirty work but they found out she was a ringleader when they found out all the sales associates would bring her the stolen money and she would dole it out after taking her cut. We had a field tech that was awesome. Probably the best I've ever seen or heard of. He was knowledgeable, skilled, and personable. He was always early, worked great under stress when things went south, and often finished jobs early. If we had off our issues, he was always available and it seemed like he was in his truck and ready to get going right away. Well it turns out that he was always in his truck and ready to go. He had been living in his company truck for some time and just pulled off the side of the road each night at a utility pole, climbed up. Stole some cable TV and set up shop for the night. We found that out. And had to let him go. Also the coke. And the M. Sounds like the ultimate field tech. 24 hours availability no problem thanks to the M. And he probably creates more calls if there aren't any by stealing copper wiring. Obligatory not me but. Co-worker. I had joined the company a few months prior. Was still getting to know the various details of my job and this guy was the star of the company. I spent as much time working with him as I could honestly. I mean, he was the freaking star. He was a solid programmer, great project manager, awesome account and customer management skills and he had a knack for thinking outside the box on creative solutions. He loved working there, had rejected offers from Google, Facebook and Pinterest that I know of, and then he fricked the director's 16 year old daughter, age of consent is 16 here, he was 31, welp. That would not tend to win you any friends in the management. Not me, but a story from when I worked at Disneyland a long time ago in attractions, rides. The area manager loved this one particular cast member, employee, like, this was the son he never had. This CM was promoted to lead on one of the roller coasters fairly quickly in his regime. One night he was the lead on the closing crew, and the crew decided to ride after hours. Idiots that they are. They went without the lap bars down, and on one turn the ride is visible from the walkway. Even though the park was closed to guests, security was still in the park. And a security guard saw the train go by with the CMs standing up through the turn. Security gets a hold of theme park one, the manager in charge of the park for the night, who calls attractions one to find out what's going on. Not surprisingly, every CM who was on the closing crew that night was fired. Unfortunately, so was the prodigal son, because he was the one who dispatched the train without the lap bars down. I didn't have to do the firing, but for whatever reason, my colleague had it in for this mid-level supervisor. She was a great trainer, did everything she was asked, took initiative, and then some. She was always worth well more than what she earned, and had an absolute passion for the work. We worked with kids with autism. After a few months of having some vendetta against her, my colleague wrote her up, literally for being away from her desk too often. Her uncle had recently been diagnosed with terminal brain cancer and she was the only relative in town who could care for him. 
so the time she was away from her desk, she was stepping out to cry when she felt overwhelmed and didn't want people to see her cry. I found out after she was let go for this that she had informed the supervisors of this when her uncle was diagnosed and that she was feeling very emotional about it and may need to take days off take more frequent breaks to gather herself again and remain productive. Instead of showing compassion, my colleague used this as an opportunity to terminate her despite having no other red flags, feedback, or performance issues. There was simply a personality difference and she didn't gossip with the other supervisors. And this was all done with our other colleagues and supervisors blessings. I don't work for this company after I found out about this. Obligatory happened to a co-worker. Working at a bank. My branch had the biggest superstar in the state. Always crushing sales numbers. He generated more revenue than the rest of the branch combined. He set up a really big business account presentation, but his mother died literally on the day he was supposed to give the talk. Branch manager stepped in, held the presentation. The guy had built everything up. It was essentially a done deal. Branch manager just had to get a signature on the paperwork. Obviously feeling bad for him, thinking he deserved the credit. They booked the deal under his name the next day. Technically to get credit for a deal you have to be there at signing. Both were fired within a week for sales manipulation. Or full use of the rules. I wasn't the manager, but we had a supervisor who was a rising star in the company, turned a struggling operation into one that was running well under budget and was generally easy to work with. We also had a mechanic who was a lazy sack of crap and nobody could ever find him. So one day the operations manager was looking at the security footage trying to figure out what the mechanic was doing so day and caught him selling pills out of his truck in the parking lot. So he called the police. When the police showed up. The mechanic was in his truck, in the middle of selling drugs to the supervisor. They were both fired. The operation went from under budget to being $50,000, $100,000 over for the next few months. Corporate set a trap, and baited him into stealing. He was a great guy, fun and interesting, easy to get along with. He would volunteer to take the early shifts and open the store. He'd receive the new inventory and stock the shelves himself. His cash was always correct and he never did anything wrong, until he did. One morning he opened the new stock shipment, and loaded the shelves. There was an extra item in the box that wasn't listed on the manifest. The correct procedure was to add it to inventory, and put it on the shelf. He instead opted to claim it wasn't there, and took it home. The perfect crime, right? I had to fire him the next day, and it sucked. To be fair, integrity is what you do when no one is looking. Part of my job is to process expense reports from the sales department. I noticed one month that the top salesman had claimed a plane ticket expense twice. Once when he booked it and then again when he took the flight months later. I reviewed his past expenses and noticed he was doing this regularly. When he booked the flight originally he would claim the full amount of the ticket. Then when he used the flight he would claim each leg of the trip as a separate daily expense so that the receipt amounts wouldn't match so as to avoid detection. This is how I figured out he was doing it intentionally. I showed the evidence to the CFO and he was gone the next week. I only went back 3 years but he stole about $10,000 over those 3 years. You'd think people who made a certain amount of money wouldn't risk it by stealing, but then you'd be wrong. Not me, but I was working in retail, and one of the customer service guys was being groomed for management. He'd been there for a while, was trusted to count money and with the safe combination, opened if managers couldn't, act. He was a cool black guy, his race is important to the story, but a bit cocky and arrogant. My cousin also worked there, who was also cocky and arrogant. Anyway, my cousin put in his two weeks, but wasn't being a bad employee. My cousin didn't like the soon to be manager, because they were pretty similar in a lot ways, and they clashed because of it. On my cousin's last week, unprovoked, he approaches the guy and says you look like a big black dong. The guy walks up to my cousin. Puts his finger to his head and says do you have a problem with me? It ended there with my cousin walking away. Then reporting he was threatened. Because a finger made contact. The guy was fired. My cousin was a dong and didn't regret it and laughed about it with my other friends. Who were also dongs. Best Buy manager. Had a guy in geek squad who was a great salesperson. Probably top 10 in the district. 
He had an incident during a data transfer where he accidentally transferred another client's information to the external drive. The customer flipped out, and unfortunately due to company policy, we had to let him go. Fortunately, he knew it was going to happen, but it was just a matter of time. I work at a store where we have to ask for donations for the charity we support at every transaction. We are in competition with the other stores in the chain, and whichever store has the highest percentage of donations after 3 months get a bonus. Every employee, cashier or not, gets $100. Well one of my assistant managers was awesome, always had the highest percent of donations per transactions and highest dollar amount. She always did a great job in all other aspects of the job as well. Well, it turns out she was offering every customer her employee discount if they donated. So if someone spent $500 and she gave them 30% off, they wouldn't at all mind donating $10 to $20 per transaction. Well it came back from corporate what she was doing and we had to let her go. We had a new girl get 100% for 2 weeks in a row on her charity donations. Turns out she'd been charging everyone for at least a $1 donation, regardless of whether or not they'd approved. We had to actually refund donations to those angry customers that really didn't want to donate. I used to work for Dell back in 1998 to 2000 in their sales department. This is Jewelist right before people ordered online so it was still a call center. To make a really long story short, I was one of their best sales reps. Top 3 every month. I was making about $5,000 a week as a 23 year old. They decided to replace me, and most of my team, with temps making $11 an hour and no commissions. Only I didn't know this. I was given a great opportunity to train a new class of incoming salespeople. Little did I know I was training our replacements. Once they hit the floor and were running. They fired me and about 200 other salespeople. Frick Dell. Oh. Then a few years later even the temps got fired so they could move all those jobs to a call center in India. Frick Dell. He was our fastest forklift operator. Guy could get a truck loaded in 7-15 minutes. But he started developing a crappy attitude and we just couldn't work with him. The new operators we have take 30-45 minutes to get a truck loaded and they're legitimately a little dumb and have a hard time reading. I don't know if it was worth it. Probably developed an attitude because he was tired of getting paid the same as those who'd take twice as long as him. I managed a cough shop bakery. My best employee was this kid named Alexis. He was sharp and was quick to pick up on all the skills required to work in our fast-paced environment, but he was also someone who would stay out really late at night partying, and it would affect his attendance. One night in particular he calls me up and tells me he's stuck in Baltimore, we live in DC, and won't be able to make it in for his shift the following morning. He called me at 7pm, the last Mark commuter train leaves at 9.30 or so, and there's a free circulator that runs throughout the city. I used to visit Baltimore pretty regularly at the time because there was a girl I was seeing from up there. Anyways, I only had one day off a week, and was working 14 hours days. It was the last straw in a series of no call no show situations where he had left me hanging for our busiest days. I called his phone that same night, and told him that if he didn't show up for his shift on time the following morning, he was fired. He didn't show up and I never saw him again. This was a few years ago, but I sometimes wonder what happened to him. He was a really sharp kid, but he did way too many drugs, and wasn't as clever as he thought he was, so would often get into trouble with police. People who got fired on the first day of the job, what happened? Hired by a chain store, first day of work, still in the back office filling out paperwork, dealing with HR. Manager says to me, I sent in the automated personality test, and corporate says I can't hire you, I'm sorry, they didn't pay me for one stroke to a day though. If you ever have to take on of these tests, always answer report to my supervisor even if the correct answer is pull the freaking fire alarm and get as many people out of there as possible. All they are looking for is someone who is incapable of challenging authority. I just got hired at Sonic Drive-In. They had secret customers come in fairly regularly who who order and eat the food, then judge the employees and restaurant on how well they handled company policies and stuff. Well the current employees have been getting horrible grades lately, like the highest in the last 2 months was 68 stroke 100. The owner walks in and says the next person who gets below a 90 is fired, 
so on my very first day they put me on drive through which was a nightmare. And sure enough, I find out later that a secret customer rolled up. Owner comes back in at the end of my shift 8 hours later. Who was working driving through today? You got an 88. You're fired and then left. So that's how I got fired for being the best employee there on my first day. So on your first day you got a higher score than the previous secret shopper scores. You did better with no training than people working there longer. Yet they fire you. That owner or manager is definitely the reason why the scores are low. Pizza place. I asked what my pay would be and whether the training was paid. This was highly offensive to the comically Italian man who owned the pizza place and he said that there was no need for me to come back. The pizza was awesome, though. So I still got pizza there. I wonder if this counts. I once got hired by a magazine to do some translation work. It was a freelance gig so we didn't even do any official paperwork beforehand or anything. When I arrived, they said oh, so sorry, we already had someone come in and do the translation. I was livid. I asked why I wasn't notified. They had no answer and essentially fired me on my first day. About 6 months later, I'm working somewhere else, and I get an email from the same local magazine asking me if I'd like to come in and translate some stuff for them. I was in a bad mood so I went totally out of character and went off on them via email, but in a professional tone. I basically said I do not respect you or your boss for treating me this way. Please do not offer any work to me or ever contact me again. Two days later I get an email from them telling me that I've been fired for insubordination. Got fired on my first day at my first job. During high school, mixing custom colors at a paint store, I followed the formula exactly, according to the manufacturer's specifications, but the resulting color didn't match the sample. As mentioned here some time ago, the paint store owner fired me on the spot in front of customers, even though it turned out to be his fault for not having updated formula specs he had received from the manufacturer. That sucks but it seems that you got out early of what would have been a crappy job. I applied for a public safety position at a municipality, legit medium sized town of about 50k people, and got called in for an interview. I show up to be informed that this is a 3 part interview first with HR, then a physical agility test then a panel interview which includes the mayor, city manager and medical director. Mind you I was never told about this process, it isn't in the job posting and I'm in a goddamned suit. I do the HR part then go to the pat, look like freaking rich eyes and running a 40 yard dash only doing an entire pat and show up decently sweaty at this panel interview. Fairly certain there is no way I'm getting hired for this job I proceed through the interview. They ask some completely generic questions. I can understand some with a few job specific questions mixed in but no this is all if you were walking in the woods what animal would you see questions. Then one of them stops the interview and says we've heard enough can you come in tomorrow. Day after skip Thursday and come in Friday that'll be your orientation. I said I didn't know I'd be working here tomorrow I still need to give my other job a 2 weeks notice also am I being offered the job? What's the compensation package? The mayor responds you work here now and you need to make us a priority. We can discuss pay after your orientation is over. WTF. I said I still need to give notice to my current job to which he proceeded to tell me not to bother, we wouldn't be a good fit and to turn in any equipment and uniforms. Um what equipment? What uniform? So I'm not sure if was fired, quit or never hired but they sent me a check for 8 hours so I think my story qualifies. You walk out. The door shuts. The mayor's head droops. Gentlemen, we just lost the best dang employee this municipality has ever had. First job at 14 as a bus boy. Shown 500 things in the kitchen and thinking I would have to remember them all. Shows me how to be a host on top of all this. I say can I do that tomorrow instead as I wanted to focus on learning what they showed me already. 10 minutes later I'm called into the office. Handed $20 and told I'm not what they are looking for. It was a good life lesson hey. A lot of restaurants are like this. I got hired as a bus boy at one when I was in high school. And they wanted to fire me after my first day because I didn't already know what to do. This was my first job as a 14 year old. The manager of a local bagel place told me I could work a few days a week in the summer. I worked my full first day, cutting toasting bagels all day. The owner came in at night to pick up the cash and told the manager that they didn't have the money to pay for a new employee. I was told not to come back, 
I do get free bagels from there though. The manager still remembers me and it's been over 10 years. Hired by a Michelin star restaurant for my first ever job. They expected to take me on and train me up on the job and pay less for me than already trained staff. But when a member of staff didn't turn up I had to attempt silver service with no knowledge. Obviously I failed so I ended up polishing cutlery with the owner of the restaurant. We got talking. He said he saw potential in me to do better things in my life and just said that I should never follow his footsteps and put my passion for food ahead of my other passions interests as it will ruin my life. Later he talked to the manager at the time told me I could use them as a reference for future jobs and I was given a week's rather than a day's pay. I got a job as a waiter at a, supposedly, new upscale restaurant. My first day was the day that they opened. We had to be there at 8 a.m. in order to get everything ready for the grand opening. I didn't know that scrubbing floors on my hands and knees was a part of my job description as a waiter, but I did it anyways, in my brand new perfectly clean uniform. By the time 3.30 p.m. rolled around, none of us had gotten any breaks, so I asked my boss if I could take a lunch break. He said yeah I'll give you a break, you're fired. As far as I know, the only thing that I did wrong was asking for a break. When I went back at the end of the week to pick up my whopping $20 check, most of the wait staff that I worked with was there too. It turns out that the boss fired a few more people, and the majority of the rest quit. The place went through several changes in management before it shut down about two years later. The parking lot was never very full even during peak hours. Got hired when I was young to a paintball field and on my first day I was just supposed to observe a game and watch see what the referee does during the game and got fired for not intervening when a player rushed too quick and close to an enemy, even though I was just supposed to learn that day. My friend tried to drive a golf cart without knowing the hose from the power washer was wrapped around the wheel, ripped the whole thing out of the wall. Classic, forgot to check the wheel hose spool anchor, what a rookie. A friend of mine worked as a server at a cafe and was bringing chips and dip to a table. When he set the chips and dip on the table he took one of the chips and dipped it and ate it front of the customer and his manager. He was fired on the spot. What did he think would happen? <laughs> was the second or third day but first day working with the boss. At the end of the day the share till comes up short a little over $5. I know the exact transaction too. He was slow on the register so I left it beside the till. It went into his pocket. He tells me I have to make up the difference out of pocket. I politely refuse and inform him that's not permitted by the Employment Standards Act. He blows a gasket and I leave with him yelling at me. He was fined $250. The sad thing is the woman who'd worked for him for 5 plus years had been starting her shift by putting money in the till to cover any errors. She'd probably put in more than $1300 while working for this jerk. The chick fil -A I worked at did that. I busted a nut and pulled up the page of the act and showed the manager and he basically said well that's fair. If you called them out on stuff they wouldn't push it but I know a ton of people who had to reimburse their drawers. Got hired for a warehouse position. Probably 15 years ago. Was 10 minutes late my first day because I lived 45 minutes away and the main highway got shut down due to a multi-car wreck. I called the boss and told him. He said no worries. Got to the job and was fired for being late. Technically second day since day one was my interview and I did some training. I have a sleeping disorder that was at the time undiagnosed. This is important. I was to be there clocked in at 7am at a box factory which felt like a conspiracy during training. Like we were just moving money around from cardboard folder to cardboard folder in a big circle. Giant slabs of cardboard came to us inside of huge boxes, which we then shaped into boxes and filled with slabs of cardboard and shipped out. I felt like the chain probably kept going infinitely until our same cardboard looped back around to us. Regardless, I was to punch in at 7am to join the circle of box life and I woke up staring at a clock reading 11am and panicked. I immediately called my boss on a sincere I am so sorry I don't know how I overslept even though I'd lost jobs over it before just never on day 1 and I can be there in 15 minutes. Are you freaking kidding me? Is this a freaking joke? Quit wasting my time. Click.
I groggily stumble the frick out into the living room where my housemates are playing Guitar Hero and I'm kind of in a state of shock because while I get 4 hours is an absurd amount of oversleeping, I've never been shouted at like that before. I start explaining that to them when it dawns on me one of my buddies who is currently trying to best his reigning blood score should be at school right now. He has class on Tuesdays. Trevor, you skipping today he looks at me and just reminds me his schedule. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah dude. It's Tuesday. It's Wednesday. Dude. I had slept from about 10pm Monday night until 11am Wednesday. Now I'm on an anti-seizure drug and can live without being terrified of whether or not I'm going to be able to wake up the following day. But that is the only time I got fired on the first day. I lost a lot of jobs I didn't like over that crap. This is probably the best it is Wednesday my dude story. Not fired but I showed up for what I thought was my first day in a title. Was then told no I wasn't hired for that job but for another one. That I didn't apply for and for less money. I was thinking about my options when I went to break room to grab a cup of coffee. While pushing the lid down. The cup compressed covering me. And my white shirt and car keys. I went into HR and told them that it wasn't working out. And I was taking this as a sign. Gave them a piece of my mind about their hiring practices and crappy communication. And bounced. Got a call from them on Friday asking if I wanted the job I thought I already had. Back in the late 80s a guy was employed at a small factory I was working in. He vanished halfway through the afternoon and couldn't be found anywhere. He wandered back and about half an hour later eating a big ice cream cone. He was asked not to come back the following day. I got a job at a dry cleaning place in the back. Every time I stood up, I kept hitting my head on the rack thingy. Didn't matter how careful I was, it was always there. Pretty sure it was living and just fricking with me. Anyway, owner told me it wasn't working out on my lunch break. Sounds like you just weren't a good fit. I wasn't the person but I used to work at a hospital delivering food trays. One day this new girl started. Very beautiful. Very prim. Very proper. She was apparently extremely rich and her parents had forced her to get a regular people job to teach her the value of a dollar. I'm not sure if she had made some fiscally unwise choices or if it was just a parenting method or something. But there she was with us. This job wasn't really dirty or anything. I mean, hospital environments are somewhat unpleasant but all we did we put pre-made food into ovens and then serve it to people. Cleanup was pretty gross but nothing extreme. Anyway, she couldn't believe that we had to handle food and push around these big carts. It was unfathomable to her. She thought it was putrid and difficult. She cried on the elevator on her way to deliver the first batch of food. I don't know if she quit or was fired but I never saw her again. One of my nannies, when I was a little girl, was fired the first day of work. She asked my mother if she could go to her house for crayons. And since she lived a few blocks away of our house, mom said okay. One hour passed and she did not came back. So mom went to the house of the nanny and saw her drinking tea with her mother. She did not even bother to apologize. Mom told her to never come back. But the nanny did not understand what she did wrong. So she came back next day and sat in front of our door. Mom told her to leave and she never came back. I read this in a really posh accent. Went to an interview at a clothing store. Mostly athletic stuff. Let's call them chair. So I show up to the interview. Do the whole thing. Let them know I'll be on vacation soon but I'm willing to work with them on that. I get a call later saying I'm hired and to come in to sign some stuff and then I can start my shifts when I return from vacation. Awesome. So I return from vacation. Give them a call. And they tell me a time to come in. I show up and they ask where my resume is. I told them I didn't bring one. They scolded me saying always bring a resume to an interview. I was not aware this was an interview, since I've already signed forms saying I was hired. I do the whole interview, and ask at the end about the forms. The manager who had hired me no longer works there, and apparently that means I no longer work there, either. So I get a call to come in for my first real shift. Turns out, it's an interview with another manager. So I'm sitting through this third interview after I've been told twice that I've been hired, and she says they'll give me a call. After a week, I follow up, and I'm told like I said before, if we need you, we'll call you. I haven't called you, so we don't need you, please don't call again so that's how I got hired and fired 3 times and wasted $60 on parking for the process. 
I started a job as a student mechanic at my university. Paid like crap. $9 hour I believe. But it would help pay the bills and buy beer. Flexible around my school schedule. I'm a DIY mechanic and have done basically all of my own work on all of my 7 cars. From doing brakes wheel bearings to replacing an engine. The job wouldn't be anything like that though. Described as just basic things. Oil changes. Basic inspections. Sweep up the shop. Go on runs to the parts store if something was needed and couldn't be delivered. Go on runs to pick up cars or drop off cars at an off-site shop body shop usually. Didn't do body work on site. Anyway I'm there starting the job. I'm tasked with power washing the undersides of buses big vans. The underside of a bus is a gross place. Especially in northwestern Ohio. Thick grease. Sludge. Etc. I'm not complaining though. It's 90 degrees with 110% humidity and sunny outside I'm sweating my balls off on the ground covered in grease power washing the underside of the third bus of the day probably. Hadn't really seen anybody except one guy showing me how to use the power washer and such. Then near the end of the day, I, drenched in sweat and water and grease, was approached by the manager who said something like you know, it seems like you're not really into the world. We really need someone motivated to get stuff done, and I totally get it if you don't want to do it anymore. I was like dafuck. I had like 5 minutes total of interaction with other people on my entire shift I mostly just kept to my own business power washing buses until my shift was over. I was pretty peed because I just did some of the most miserable work imaginable for hours for like $40. Who tf would be enthusiastic about that kind of work? Anyway I wasn't exactly fired, but I didn't return for the next day. I got a much better job at a help desk for police court software stuff. Paid better and I basically sat around the whole time watching YouTube or reading taking the occasional phone call. I used to work at a warehouse that had a lot of temps and had a guy disappear after lunch on his first day. After asking around I learned that he was riding circles around the island at the entrance to the industrial park about a 12 foot loop. And the cops happened to ride by. They pulled him over and arrested him for what my manager claimed as being high as a kite. But he said he had lost his wallet and was just looking around for it. Place was kind of filled to the brim with people on something. From weed to coke. Even had a guy who would come in every day with a big water bottle filled with just orange juice. MHMM sure. Reddit. What event at your job made you just say frick this? I quit. I got accused of stealing a salad. I worked as a cashier at a grocery store while in high school. Because they had scheduled me 7. 1 stroke 2 hours. I only qualified for a 15 minute break. Not a 30 minute. But so I spent the first 10 or so minutes of my break on the phone with a mechanic working out issues with my car. This was before I got a cell phone so this was in the office on a landline. I then run back to the little cafe near the back of the store that has a salad bar and make a quick salad. Which you weigh and price there. By this time I had about 5 minutes left on break, and the manager was very strict about not going over your 15 minutes. One minute over resulted in being written up, so I stand at the cafe register for a good minute or two, even shouting hello and no one is to be found. I quickly eat my salad, and then take the sticker up to the front registers to pay for the $1.99 salad. I go back on the clock. And about 20 minutes later I am called into the office. They say a situation has occurred. But don't tell me what. They said they are sending me home for the day. So I come back in the next day for my shift. And they call me into the office again. In the office is the store manager. The assistant manager. The office manager. The cafe manager. And my shift supervisor. Mind you I am a 16 year old kid at their first job who had never been in any sort of trouble. They accuse me of stealing the salad because despite purchasing the salad, as our records do indicate, you consume the salad before the purchase. I explained to them how the cashier at the cafe was nowhere to be found, and how if I wanted to eat during my break at that point, I would have had to eat it back in the cafe and then pay for it up front. I did apologize, though, and let them know it would not happen again. They tell me to go home. And that they will contact me tomorrow regarding if I keep my job or not. I left in tears. When I got a hold of myself, I realized how ridiculous the whole situation was. All the managers in the store standing in the office, arms folded, staring me down. A simple warning would have been sufficient. But they acted like I was swiping $20s out of the register or something. I go back in, 
find the store manager and tell him I quit. He told me he was going to keep me, as he believed in giving second chances to people who mess up, and I tell him I'm good, I won't be coming in anymore, I'm now 31, and a nurse, and have seen nurses go home with a narcotic in their pocket and get in less trouble than I did over that damned salad. I've definitely left jobs in tears before over petty crap, clearly those guys thought they were tough badass big CEO bosses, instead they were just scrap pie cafe idiots. I need a summer job while in high school so I applied at a local grocery store to bag stock clean. My first day there, there was some sort of confusion as to what I was supposed to do or to whom I was to report. I was sent to the front counter where the customer service manager gave me a till and told me to open a register. Mind you I'd had zero training on a register, I didn't even know how to put the till in it for frick's sake. I told the lady this and was told to go do my job. Within about 2 minutes at the register there was a line several deep, and I'm just standing there with the till in my hands. The customer service lady comes storming over asking why I had such a line and I tried again to explain to her that I was supposed to be a stalker or whatever and that I knew nothing about operating a register. She called me stupid in front of the customers so I handed her the till and told her to go frick herself. Walk down the street in my uniform and got a job at another grocery store. Almost the same thing happened to me but fortunately I didn't get called stupid. My first day of training they just threw me on a register. I asked for help and they said I'll send someone over and never did. I walked out and didn't come back. I got a good story for this one. When I was in my late teens I got a job at McDonald's inside a mall. On my first day, on the closing shift, I was asked by a lazy manager to empty the grill grease traps into large garbage sacks quadruple bag them and toss them down the garbage chute mind you this was not the appropriate way to dispose of the grease the right way required a longer process of taking the grease traps pouring them into a container on wheels then taking that down the freight elevator and emptying into a big grease dumper this process took about 20 minutes but the manager wanted to get out of their asap because she said she had a date so here I am on my first night of this job and I'm now waddling like a penguin down the back food court hallway with two giant with heavy garbage bags full for Mickey D's grease. Before I get to the end of the hall, both bags split wide open and all of that oil, burger chunks, chicken McNuggets, fish fillet pieces, etc just completely slather the entire corridor. It smelled awful. I went back into the store and told the manager who screamed at me at me called me useless and told me I had to stay with her to clean it up off the clock. I said, you're out of your mind lady. I quit and threw my hat at her. The next day the store manager called me and asked me why I had walked away from the job. I told her the story and she subsequently fired that assistant manager and told me to come back and I ended up working there for about a year or so. Satisfying. Frick that I wouldn't have cleaned it either lol. At my old job. This guy didn't like his salmon burrito so he told me to come closer like he was gonna whisper something and then he spit regurgitated salmon, tortilla and whatever else was in the burrito right onto my face. I may have overreacted by cussing at him but I quit before my old boss could fire me. I had a customer throw a drink in my face because it was flat. I didn't notice the CO2 needed changing, and my boss packed up their dinners personally and sent them on their way. He said it was on the house because they weren't welcome back because no one treats his staff like that. I worked for a medical supply company that made respirator tubing that removed moisture from airlines. I was responsible for braiding a protective cover over the tube itself. It involved 8 very loud machines in a soundproof room. I was one of only 3 people who could do it. Me, a co-worker who was on maternity leave and my direct supervisor who hadn't done the job in 2 years since they soundproofed the room. In the summer the soundproofed room would get up to 90 degrees and I was required to wear a lab coat as part of the uniform. I made an argument that with the coat on I was sweating my butt off and that the sleeves kept getting caught on the machine. So the president of the company said I didn't have to wear it in the room. So I was taking a day off. I put in for it a month ahead of the day. I made sure that the company would have enough tubing for the day plus extra. And I get a call from my buddy who worked there with me that my direct supervisor was talking crap about me. And how I whined about working in 90 degree room wearing an extraneous layer of clothing that could potentially end up getting me hurt. I went in the next day, saw that all the tubing was used, 
I told the supervisor that it would take me a few hours to make more. She said I don't appreciate you neglecting your job. So I said I don't appreciate you talking behind my back about crap that doesn't concern you. I have two weeks vacation. I'm taking them starting in 10 minutes consider this my two week notice. I packed up my stuff in my locker and left. My friend calls me an hour later. Doogee's bitching about how hot it is in there. I told him no crap. That's why I took off the coat. For my brother, it was when the boss knew he had no other option but to walk an hour to work. Let him walk the hour in 105 degree Fahrenheit heat only to tell him sorry too hot to work today. Go home. And then call him as soon as he got back in the front door of the house and say change my mind. Come back in. BTW you get to stand outside wearing the mascot costume. He found a new job rather quickly. He went to concert. I got a temp job at a credit card company. The training was almost non-existent. We were enrolling card holders in the payment protection plan. Essentially, you pay a monthly rate then if you lose your job down the line it allows you to miss some payments and not accrue interest etc. Most people never use it so they don't want it on there. We were told we were expected to add it unless the customer explicitly said no. Maybe, add it. I'll think about it, add it. I don't think so, add it. I think they hoped people wouldn't notice and they could blame the rep if a customer did notice it. I drove out there on day 2 and just sat in the parking lot. I couldn't get out of my car. After sitting there for a while I went home, called the agency and told them to find me something else. I was young and naive so while I felt it was wrong I didn't realize it was probably illegal until many years later. Found the Wells Fargo employee. I worked in retail in college. A district manager was visiting our shop and trying to resolve a problem between the store manager and the rest of the staff. We were in a group, discussing the issues, and the district manager was defensively shooting down every concern that was brought up. I made the observation that perhaps we had communication difficulties. The district manager quickly snapped that I was wrong and we communicated just fine. It was not a big deal, but that was my moment. It was a moment in which the absurdity of the situation was too much. I nodded, smiled, muttered something about sure we do, and quit right then. Reason I quit too, the manager thought she was better than everybody because she did everything without telling us. I told her to communicate it with us better and there would be no more problems. She said she was and I quit. Long story short, I got held up as an overnight baker by another employee, knife to my throat, the works. I wrote about it before I think. The police came and the issue was mostly resolved. They found her pretty quick since we all recognized her. I still worked the rest of my shift in a bit of a haze, but didn't want to leave the company hanging the next day with nothing to sell or for the other baker to be alone. The opening manager, whom I already couldn't stand, came in and noticed the police dust everywhere and asked what happened. She was pretty nonplussed to hear we had gotten held up but was incredibly concerned that one of the batches of bread wasn't glossy because I had forgotten to close the vent when it got steamed. I walked out, even though it was already the end of my shift, so it wasn't a huge deal. I just called a GM and said I wouldn't be coming in that night, or ever. I had informed my boss and the supervisor that I would be unable to work on Sunday because I would be attending one of my close friends funeral. Near the end of the funeral I received a phone call from my supervisor that I need to get to work because she had an appointment to get her hair done and couldn't reschedule. I told reminded her that I was at a funeral and she didn't believe me. So I took a picture of myself in front of the funeral home and sent it to her. She calls me back and says that it's not an excuse and that if it's not family it's not important that I be there. And I lost IT on her. What would you know about my friends and family? Who do you think you are to tell me not to grieve over the loss of someone I was close to? You need this work done so bad? Find someone else to do it for you. Because I won't be back. Ever and hung up the phone. I get a call about 30 minutes later from my boss asking me to please reconsider quitting and that he will make sure that work gets covered for today. I tell him no. So long as my supervisor is still with the company, I will not be back. He acknowledges my anger and lets me be on my way. About 2-3 months later I get a call back from him asking me if I can work part time for him because my supervisor is unable to cover all the work I was doing. And I told him that he would need to double my previous hourly wage if he wanted me back. 
he considered it for about a week and decided that that would not be feasible and thanked me for all the years of hard work I put into his company. Worked at a family owned coffee shop back in the day. The owner's daughter was notoriously lazy and would lounge around reading the newspaper and eating all day while bossing the non-family employees around mercilessly. I never called in sick. Was the only person able to do the catering because I actually had a driver's license and they completely depended on me. I came in 3 minutes late for a shift one day and the owner's daughter decided that she wanted to make a thing out of it. I would have taken correction for being late from her mother or her husband, both of whom worked very hard, but I was not about to take a verbal abuse from a pseudo manager who contributed nothing to the success of the business. As it was, I refused to apologize, which infuriated her, so she started saying things like well don't let it happen again, you're making a habit of it. This wasn't true, so I told her she needed to list every single time I had been late right then and there because if it was a habit, surely she would have this information available. She couldn't, because it wasn't a habit, and I told her that if she ever spoke to me like that I would quit on the spot and that she would be in huge crap for it because they depended on me and she knew it. I won that fight, but she tried cutting an attitude with me a couple weeks later. Not realizing that I had been interviewing for another job already and had been offered a position. I quit later that day, cited her behavior as my reason for declining to keep part-time hours at the shop to supplement my part-time hours at this other job. And she got massively chewed out by her family. Her husband's take on it was we can't keep changing employees like we change our effing underwear just because you feel the need to be a bee. We can't keep changing employees like we change our effing underwear just because you feel the need to be a bee. Many people working in positions that give them a shred of power need to realize this. Work and jobs don't have to be such crap if everyone would kinda do their part to make it work. Yet, yeah, I quit a $100k plus job. Back in 2005 I was working for a company that produced healthcare conferences. All of the sales and business development responsibilities for a couple of their events were mine. And my team included a conference producer, a marketing manager and we shared some lower level employees with other groups. The producer resigned to take another position at a different company so the CEO asked me to handle her job until they could find a replacement. No problem. I added that role onto my already ridiculous calendar. So now I'm working with all of our sponsors, finding new ones and putting together the conference program. A month goes by and no replacement. Then the marketing guy quits. Same story, I'm asked to handle his job as well. Now I'm doing the work of 3 fairly higher level people and still killing my sales numbers but I'm getting worn down. Working 8-6 or so in the office, going home, eating dinner and then working to 9 or 10 most nights. Maybe a couple weeks later we're in a meeting with all of the company managers from the various event teams and the CEO asks why I haven't confirmed a speaker recommended by one of our top tier sponsors and I tell him I reached out 2 days prior. But haven't heard back. He freaking goes off on me about how I'm not doing the job I'm being paid for and I need to be more proactive and all this other crap. During his tirade every manager in corporate is staring in shock because they knew how much I had been doing in addition to my job. I don't say a word. The meeting ends and I go back to my office where I fire up my computer and email my resignation to my VP. I told her I couldn't give notice and it was my last day. She calls the CEO and the two of them come into my office and ask why I'm leaving and I say that I'm doing the job of three people for one salary and him yelling was the last freaking straw. He apologizes, asks me to please stay because the event is about 90 days away and they'll be screwed if I leave. Nope, I'm leaving. Finished packing my desk, stopped by HR to say goodbye and let them know I expect to be paid my commissions owed and I left. I had put in my 2 weeks notice and was training for my new job after work. I had been working a set schedule for 8 months, one that did not work with my education or my volunteer time with the animal shelter, and that was part of why I was leaving. Suddenly, my set schedule was changed to split shifts. Every day of my 2 weeks was now a 4 hour split shift with 2 hours in between so that I couldn't train at my new job. And you know, that wasn't even the final straw. No, that would be the closing crew the night before. I had left them an urgent order and said, Listen, I don't care what else you do or don't do, you must get this order complete. 
This order was for a customer who was verbally abusive but my manager was too much of a wimp to tell her to GTFO and said if I filed assault charges for her hitting me with bean bags, I would be fired. They didn't finish it. The customer was waiting in the parking lot when I pulled up 30 minutes before the store opened. The order wasn't done. Nothing was done. I walked. Man even when you're angry you are so dang polite dude lol. I got Christmas vacationed. My law firm won a huge verdict, got a massive payout from our 35% cut, and everyone was celebrating. It was a smallish firm that only had about 10 associates, but was pretty top heavy with a bunch of partners. According to some semi-standard norms among plaintiff's firms, the firm cut should have been divided in such a way that each associate was looking at roughly a 25k dollars bonus. Ours was primarily a defense firm. So there were no written rules or bylaws for the division of an award that big. When I say that the associate bonus was a small fraction of what the senior partners received, I'm underselling how big their cut was. I had fellow associates who were looking to this bonus for a down payment on a house, a new car to replace an 18 year old beater, you name it. When the checks were finally issued, rather than 25k dollars, each associate, regardless of seniority, got 1.5k dollars. That's it. It's a measure of how much the partners knew that they fricked us that when we took off for the day at noon to go drown our sorrows. We didn't get a single call wondering where we were or asking us to come back to the office. To add insult to injury, a partner rolled into the parking garage with a brand new luxury car a week later with a vanity plate with the case name on it. Within 6 months, all but one associate had quit the firm, myself included. The legal industry would be a great place to work if it weren't for all the lawyers and clients. Employers of Reddit. What is something that an employee did that resulted in immediate termination due to sheer unprofessionalism? Had an employee named Ernie call in Monday morning saying his dad died over the weekend. I told to take all the time he needed. Tuesday was the viewing. Wednesday was the funeral. Who shows up Wednesday? Ernie's dad. Ernie forgot his lunch. True story. Years ago when I worked at Home Depot, a couple idiots got fired for conducting a transaction involving a bag of weed, one buying it from the other, inside the store, instead of, you know, going outside to the huge vacant lot next to the store. Here I've got a good one, so I helped run a 300 room hotel by the airport. People often come in and pay a monthly parking fee to keep their cars at our hotel during trips. One day we have a customer come back from their trip. They hand us the ticket and we go up to the lot to find it. No car. Maybe we got the spot wrong so we search the entire complex. No car. Me and the other manager go take a look at the cameras and you'd never guess what we find. Not only has our youngest valet taken their car, which was a BMW by the way, this freaking valet has been using it to get to and from work since the customers left on their trip two weeks ago. So once we realize this the customers are standing right out front filing a police report, guess who shows up to work, driving the guests freaking car, pulls up right in front of them and the cop to go clock and arrested and fired on the spot. Worked at a large liquor store warehouse in Rhode Island. An old guy who worked as a stock boy in the huge walk-in cooler got crap faced while stocking. Ended up crapping his pants. Went to bathroom took off his crap filled boxes and put them up in the drop ceiling. He was fired that day for getting drunk at work. But the crap filled boxer shorts were not found for like 3 or 4 days after the smell persisted with no obvious source. Unless. Somebody crapped their pants and panicked and hid them. When they were found. Just blame the drunk guy who got fired recently. Sold his company laptop with all our source code to a pawn shop in Vegas during a convention for drug money. Supervisor in a customer service call center. One of my agents hands me an account number and says the lady wants me to know whoever she spoke to the night before was rude. Now, normally I would pass this off to the offending agent's supervisor and move on. Instead, I pull up the call and this caller was surprisingly chill for exactly how rude this employee was. I decided to pull a sampling of about 15 calls over the previous 2 weeks, concentrating on short calls and calls close to the end of his shift. I was livid by the time I was done. Some examples. Him to a caller where are you located? Isn't that the east coast? Why are you calling so late to do this? Call back tomorrow. This was 30 minutes before close. Would have been a 10 minute call. 
laptops. Another caller was attempting to verify their account and he kept yelling listen to them, over and over at escalating volume until the caller hung up. This was for absolutely no apparent reason. He asked another caller why they were bothering to get a certain type of phone for someone who couldn't even figure out how to activate their own phone. He would hang up on anyone who was calling just before closing time. This is the first time in my career where I have personally called multiple customers to apologize for their experience. Every single one said they had been shocked but not bothered to complain. Some even had orders to port out their numbers since their interaction. Usually we have to write someone up, get HR to approve it, set up an improvement plan. Not this guy. He was brought directly into HR, asked about the calls and just sat there, stone-faced. He was termed that day. I was legitimately nervous leaving work for a few months. He was spotted lurking a few times but nothing ever happened. I managed a liquor store and worked the Sunday busy shift all day myself because it was very high volume of customers and higher chance of theft happening. I had the storeroom set out so I could access high selling products easily and restock shelves quickly. Every Monday another shift worker would rearrange the storeroom how she thought it should be. After asking her not to keep changing the layout she plainly told me to frick off. I fired her on the spot. She phoned up the owner to complain and the owner told her to frick off. The lesson here is don't frick with the guy the boss trusts to run the busiest days solo. I work for an insurance company. One of our sales agents told a guy hey, go frick yourself when the guy told him he didn't want to pay whatever his premium quote was. He got fired and walked out. My company is really cool in that we aren't scripted, but we do draw the line at swearing at policy holders. Duh. New employee struck up a conversation with his female supervisor about golf. She had no interest in sports. While going through his orientation packet, he kept bringing up the game. We just thought he was strange. After lunch, he told the group of us running the class that he had been working on his stroke. Pulled up a video on his phone of him stroking his dong in the store bathroom to trick show us. Kudos on the build up. Horrible punchline. Worked at a country club. Huge outing with hundreds of people. One of the caddies gets in a fight with another caddy and yells I mark how to be and pulls out a blade. That was his last loop. The poor people were supposed to do that in the basement where the rich could place bets, not in the open. Once upon a time, we were taking donations for the neonatal intensive care unit. A gentleman I worked with asked a customer if he wanted to make a donation, and the customer declined. The employee said okay, I'll just write down here that you hate dying babies. The customer wasn't happy, he was fired shortly after. God dang I hate stores asking me to donate money to their charities. Just let me buy my hot fries in peace. Sharon, I know it's not Sharon's fault, and I never take my annoyance out on the employee asking, but the obvious attempt at corporate tax write off gets under my skin. Somehow took bolt cutters out of the security office and cut open the locks on the lockers of two co-workers. Caught on camera. The kicker? He had his two weeks notice and his last day was that week. He would have received an 80 hour cash out of his remaining paid time off and been eligible for rehire. Instead, he was fired at the start of his last shift. Managed a certain gaming retail store. Had to hire this one girl who was the daughter of one of the store manager's friends. She was absolutely worthless as a worker, wouldn't listen or do any tasks she was given. She was closing with me one night. As we closed the store, I was counting the register and told her to take out the garbage. She looked at me and said that's gross. No way. At first I thought she was just afraid to go outside alone. So then I asked if she would vacuum the store. She leaned back on the counter, said I don't vacuum and started messing around on her phone. I had enough at that point. I told her she could pack up and leave. She asked if she could look at next week's schedule. I told her not to worry about it, and that her shifts would be taken care of. My company put people up in hotel rooms when it was snowing pretty badly, with of course the expectation you would work the following day cause they knew it would be busy. One guy was somehow angry about that and decided to take a poo in his hotel room's bathroom sink. He got fired and we got banned from the hotel. Employee finished training for part-time work. 
She received her schedule and immediately accused our store manager of lying to her. She claimed she was promised full time. When our SM informed her that she was not, and that we didn't hire full time for this position, she looked him in the eye and says, you need to clock out so we can go outside and talk about this. She then starts rolling up her sleeves. My manager was less than impressed. He told her to leave and that we'd call the cops if she returned. During induction on day 1, each new hire had to spend some time with every department to see what they did. New employee was more interested in talking about the problems she had with her son than learning about work. Turns out the bottle of Sprite she had been swigging from all day contained more gin than Sprite. Gave a guy a raise one day, title as warehouse manager. His job functions did not really change, and he had supervisor control over one part-time helper. It was a small place to work. He then proceeded to tell all 8 of his co-workers that he was paid more than them, and he told each one exactly how much because he got escalated computer privileges, and payroll was accessible via check ledger, quickly fixed oops, and then he said that he was planning on rolling in around 10 and leaving at 4, taking 2 hour lunches, he went on at length how he was way more important than they were, etc, etc, it was a total jekyll hide transformation the likes I had never seen before or since. The power rush to this guy's head for $50 more per week and a modest title change was amazing. All in 24 hours. Then he was fired. I was in stunned disbelief that I had to fire him. I went to pick up some parts from a supplier. Supplier, how is your day going? Me, you wouldn't believe it. I gave a guy a raise yesterday. Supplier, and you had to fire him today, right? Me, how did you know? Supplier, I have been doing this 40 years. Some people are crazy when they get a tiny bit of power. It happens. It's like he turned into the sort of person that runs a homeowner association. Discretion. No matter how skilled an employee is, discretion can be the difference between continued employment and merit increases and unemployment. <laughs> Director of Brewing Ops here. Hired a dude who claimed 3 years professional brewing experience on his resume. About 2 months in. Training him to run our brew house, where the beer gets made before it's fermented. As part of the process, boiling water is cycled through the system to sterilize clean it. Guy almost opened two different valves doing this, both aimed directly at this crotch. Would have resulted in him getting literally 300 plus gallons of boiling water poured onto him his dong. Tried to have a talk with him later that day about why he did that how to make sure he didn't do it again. Dude slammed his fists on the table, yelled. That spools you told me wrong at the start of convo. Fired the next morning. I won't hire that guy to run the fryer at McDonald's. Too likely to dip a hand in to grab a loose nugget. Restaurant GM came with the idea to have employees do an anonymous survey. Most replies were about how much the GM was a bully. Fired. His own idea got him fired. That and he was a power hungry frick chop. That's pretty satisfying. My supervisor punched another manager because he forgot to process his fantasy football transfer requests in time. My workload increased considerably that day. Fun times. As the commissioner, that is very unprofessional. One guy was late 23 freaking times in a 2 month period. Hadn't even been there a full 3 months. Instead of firing him, management suspended him for a week. This idiot calls corporate and tells them that he's been treated unfairly so the store manager and his department manager have to have a meeting with him and he shows up 15 minutes late to the meeting. When he finally showed up they just fired him. A guy at my warehouse job asked another if he had visited the capital of Thailand. The victim, confused, replied number and was then slapped on the dong by the other guy. That ball slapper got fired quicker than the guy who broke out coke on our smoke break. Best worst college job I ever had. Bangkok. My sister owned a restaurant. It had security cameras mounted outside the delivery door on the back side of the building. I worked for her doing the books and alcohol inventory. Around 7 38 o'clock the prep crew comes in to prep for lunch, as well as me, a chef and a waitress. I'm sitting in the basement office, computering away when all of a sudden, the waitress comes flying in with one of the chef's w a horrified look on her face. She said she was out on the patio and heard a noise, so she looked around the wall and found one of the prep cooks slapping his salami in the corner by the delivery door. We quickly flipped on the security camera and sure enough, 
This poor kid is in the corner behind the restaurant absolutely beating himself like a drum. We all laugh hysterically and wait for him to finish. When he came back in, he washed his hands and then was asked to come to the office. Guess who got fired for spanking it at work? Poor kid. He was mortified and started crying. It was quite embarrassing for all of us. When he came back in, he washed his hands. Hey, at least he washed his hands. Worked as an assistant manager at an electronics store and had one employee pull a prank on a third key. Her mom used to be the manager so she thought she was untouchable. Third key didn't appreciate it so I brought her into the back and she refused to apologize and was hostile the entire conversation. So I sent her home. On the way out she threatened to see said employee in the parking lot at close. Making a fist at him. I called her back into the store and told her she no longer worked with us. I worked in a cinema and there was this student who helped out as a projectionist during his time off school. Apparently, he used to sneak his friends inside the projection room so they could watch the movie for free from there. One day, he called in sick but his friends came anyway, and because the guy wasn't at work, they simply asked his boss if they can watch the movie upstairs again. Our boss called and fired him while his friends were still standing in front of us. I know somebody who got fired as a projectionist because they thought it would be funny to intermittently draw lines on the film with sharpie as it was feeding into the projector so that the audience would occasionally see a dark line in the middle of the picture. When I worked in dentistry, a fellow nurse was a bit of a liability. She ended up treating an old school acquaintance, read enemy, and decided to disclose the patient's medical history to their mutual school friends. Massive complaint. Nurse fired. And rightly so was a supervisor at a tech support call center. Center had group chats for each team where agents could talk among themselves, mainly to ask questions or for help while on a call. Most of the subs, including myself, were pretty lax with it and let the teams hold conversations as long as they weren't overly distracting, kept SFW, and legit questions got answered first. All was good until I got an agent on my team who at one point proceeded to post racial jokes in our team chat that we happened to be sharing with another team. I shut down the chat, opened another work only and pulled that agent into the write up room. Intended to just talk with him about it and the punishment was going to be a write up in one week without chat access. His first reply to me, in front of another sub witness, was who's a bbp that complained it was me. I look at the other supervisor and we both just walked out of the room without a word. I walked down to HR and got approval to terminate within 5 minutes. A very vocally disgruntled agent was then walked out of the building within 10 minutes from then. There was this one customer he refused to help. He always called someone else. One day no one could stop what they were doing so he had to take a dollar bill from said customer. He laid it flat on the counter and sprayed it on both sides with Lysol until there was a literal puddle on the desk as the customer stood there waiting for his change. That was the final straw with that one. Bartender I know served free drinks and hit on a group 2 girls while ignoring the rest of the restaurant. He tried to get them to go to a club with him when he was off and do blow. Probably wouldn't have been too quick to fire him if the girls weren't secret shoppers. Young guy on his first day left during his 20 minute break and didn't come back until almost 3 hours later. When questioned he said my friends invited me to breakfast so he went out to a restaurant to have breakfast with them and came back to work after. He was told he can't do that you only get 20 minutes he said oh sorry this is my first job I've ever had. The next day he disappears after first break again and comes back about 2-3 hours later and says he went out for breakfast with his friends again like it was no big deal. Fired on the spot, edit, to clear things up for some people. The 20 minutes was for the first break of the day we had another break later that was 30 minutes long a total of 50 minutes of break in an 8 hour shift. 30 minutes is a legal requirement here in Ontario for a period of 8 working hours. The actual law states that workers cannot work for 5 hours without 30 minutes of break to eat. Therefore most companies will make that break happen at a time so when it's over there are less than 5 hours left and the shift by doing this they can legally only let employees have 30 minutes total because of the loophole of not having another 5 hours worked consecutively. It's pretty crappy of most places to do but it does not break the law to do this. Really nice for being understanding for the first time. People can be very clueless about obvious things sometimes so I think explaining that was not okay and letting him have a second chance was super nice. 
openly did coke at a company party. No one cares if you do coke. Just go to the bathroom so we have plausible deniability. But we had a guy who worked with us who had brain damage. Management let him get away with a lot out of fear of a lawsuit. Mainly, he liked bragging about how many girls asses he'd touched. He'd apparently just walk up to girls in public and grab their butts, then come into work and brag about it. While it's kinda skeevy, you can't exactly fire someone for that. I also heard him bragging about something he did on Tinder once, but I didn't hear the whole thing. I wouldn't be surprised in the least if he was bragging about sending girls dong pics, though. Anyway, what got him fired instantly was when he started hitting on a girl at work. She told him no, so he threw a stapler at her head. Instant termination. Bragging about sexual harassment definitely falls under the can be fired for list. Even if it's not happening at work, talking about it openly could easily be considered as creating a hostile work environment as it could easily be overheard as making sexual remarks. A girl in the gas station I work at was fired for punching a customer who was trying to steal a Snickers. She made up this bull's story about how he spit on her or something but the cameras caught everything. Apparently he was an older man on crunches. The CEO of the company got the video and she was fired instantly. I worked at a tourist attraction and we had a small shop that made and sold fudge. Well one of the girls that worked in fudge stole a whole duffel bag of fudge. She was fired the next morning. Thanks to you I now have duffel bag of fudge as a concept. And it will stick with me for all of time. At a small startup, we found that one of our junior developers had a Twitter account where he tweeted all day long about how much the company sucked and how unfair it was that we were making him fix bugs in the software. Found the account at 5pm and he was crap canned before he could even make it back into the office the next morning. A server got caught ripping off people with $3 off coupons. He went to a paper machine. Stole all the papers to get the $3 off coupons and was able to pocket the $3 on cash customers. What he did not know was the coupons are numbered and all of his that he turned in were in sequential order. Summer job when I was in high school. I was a lifeguard at a country club. Some hotshot all state swimmer worked with me and acted like he owned the place. He never did anything other than check out the women who came to the pool. We guarded on rotation and it was now his turn to be in the high chair. Not too long after, a little girl almost drowned cause Phelps up there fell asleep. Fired immediately. She didn't want to help me do the store windows displays because she could break a nail doing it. I thought she was kidding but no she was dead serious. She was mad at me for firing her. She didn't show up for work, didn't call or anything. She was mad at me for firing her. She stole from the store. Yes, she was also mad at me for firing her. He spit on the floor. Inside. I wasn't the one who fired him but he was still mad at me for not defending him. It's like living in the twilight zone. Who raised those people? Not an employer, but a sort of manager. I worked at a large mechanic shop as a glorified janitor in college. I worked cleaning stuff or refurbishing old parts, but sometimes turned wrenches as a mechanic when it got busy. One summer got really busy, so I was being a mechanic more than cleaning and the place went to crap. To make up for it, my boss hired some high school kids and had me train them. Easy peasy. After that, I was supposed to dole out a chores list every morning to them. One kid was lazy, and my boss knew it, so he told me to give him the harder chores. To break him in, which actually is how I go good at my job in the first place. A chore that needed done one day was to weed whack the property, which was rather large. It was most definitely the hardest chore that day. Told the kid to it, and he went off. An hour later, one of the other kids approached me and said the lazy kid tried to pawn off his task to him because he didn't want to do it because he was above the other new hires. Boss didn't take too kindly to that and fired him on the spot. I held a temp agency job to put up some warehouse shelves. They asked me to weed whack their whole property, about 4 acres. I did it but it took about 3 hours. The guy I was reporting to handed me a $50 cash bonus on the spot for doing it without complaining. I was cajoled and convinced to hire my then GF sister's boyfriend to help out in my old business refurbishing buildings. It was just 2 weeks work, so I hired him. What's the worst that could happen? All he had to do was fetch and carry tools, and certain bits of product. Nothing heavy, nothing tricky. Just fetch me that hammer, get the ladders, see that timber, 
put it on the trestle so I can cut it etc. By the third day it had all got on top of him. Fetching hammers is tricky work, obviously. So he decided to go to a house near where we were working and get out of his head on drugs and drink. I hadn't seen him for a bit so I go look for him, and find him with his eyes going in seemingly different directions, sitting on an armchair with powder on his nose, some weed in one hand and a can of beer in the other. He was off his freaking head. I sacked him, but I even tried to help him by saying to tell everyone that the company decided we didn't need an extra guy anymore. However, this was not good enough. Number. So he told his GF I just didn't like him and had fired him for no reason. She then got on to her parents. I then had my GF, her sister, and their parents all giving me crap. This berating quickly stopped once I flipped my crap and told them what really happened. Congratulations. Now not only did he prove he was a slacker, he also looked a drunken druggie who had to lie to cover it all up. I have no idea what he thought would come of it. Idiot. Never hire friends or family. Always take a pic. We have video recorders and download the violation onto a stick drive for unemployment requests for benefits. Sounds like yours is a smaller business but it can save you from lawsuits as well. You might scroll to the bottom of the comments for an unusual term we had that I posted. Cameras unfortunately only recorded the truck. I worked in a call center. One guy was particularly salty one day and left while telling a buddy he was going to burn the place down one day. Dot. Someone else overheard him. And he was gone the next day. I wasn't actually around for this, but I heard all about it. A guy at a car dealership I used to work at got a promotion that he probably wasn't ready for, and the stress was getting to him. One day he approached the service manager about getting something done quickly for a vehicle that just sold. When the manager told him that they were too busy to fit it in that day, he snapped and grabbed him by the throat. It took two guys to pull him off. He got sent home for the rest of the day, and in the morning, he came in for just long enough to clear out his office. Apparently he is at another dealer and doing much better now. Was a manager at a sales call center. Girl would have two headsets on. One for work and the other for her unemployed GF that wanted to talk to her all the time to make sure she wasn't at work cheating on her. Funny thing is, she got fired for watching movie trailers on her computer which was right in front of a security camera. When I was a manager in a call center in my late teens, I walked past a member of staff smoking weed with his mates outside the office. I wouldn't have minded, it was sort of the done thing in that place, but the thing was he'd called in sick that day and when I walked past him he said that if I told anyone he'd freak me up, so I sacked him. Edit, RIP inbox, lots of people asking for more info or calling bulls on me being a manager in my teens. This was a real cowboy operation cold calling selling telecoms to businesses in South Wales. I started working there at 17 and was there 6 months before being promoted to telesales manager. I was inexplicably good at my job, so I think they just wanted to keep hold of me. This company would get 10-15 new starts every Monday, with the expectation that 2-5 of them were still working there by Friday, then repeat the process on Monday. In hindsight I think it must have been some sort of money laundering scam. The MD would come to the office once every couple of months and take the managers out to get drunk and do a lot of C. He was also much more interested in getting new staff through the door than actual sales or income. I left after about 18 months to go to uni, and the business disappeared shortly after. When this incident happened, I went back upstairs and had a good laugh about it with the other managers. They asked why I didn't sack him there and then, and I responded that I didn't think it was in my job role. They handed me the phone and told me to call him and tell him not to come back. We put it on speakerphone and could hear his mates laughing in the background. He called me a C and hung up on me. Never saw him again. Oh, easy. 10th grade teacher. Testing new hires in a classroom setting. Wednesday was a guy I already wasn't a big fan of. He spent a lot of time trying to be the cool guy who doesn't care. Asking about how many vacation days he has and when he can take them in the days immediately following getting his job. Making fun of the teachers who dress formally for their job. News flash bud. We have a dress code as well. And just a general nonchalance that was totally inappropriate. So this hire is having his classroom day, and he writes something on a piece of scrap paper and slides it onto a student's desk with his back turned thinking I didn't see. I thought maybe he was trying to tell her something without embarrassing her, like maybe she had her fly down, 
had started her period, or even was just working from the wrong chapter of the book. I took him aside rather than calling him out in case that was the situation. I said what did you just hand the that student point blank, without skipping a beat, my cell phone number. I walked right back in there and got the paper from the confused and uncomfortable looking girl to verify this and sure enough, he had, with a smiley face. I asked him what gave him the nerve and he said come on man, this is high school, you've been there right? One look and you know she's way past puberty, if there's grass on the infield, play ball. We filed a police report and sent him packing, worked at a daycare, employee told 4 year old get your hands off your pee in front of the district manager. You have been spotted by the rare flying floofer, if you comment good boy below he don't steal your hot dogs anymore. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video, or don't, either way, have a great day you magnificent people.